All right, let's look today at the replication uh, full log, which is the transaction log for database, whatever the database name is, uh, is full due to replication. So I know sometimes it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse, but I promise you, you will be so grateful um, that when you set up replication, and depending on how your transactions are going to come through, whether they're going to come through as inserts, updates, or deletes, one of the key pieces to know in general with SQL Server actually generally is your transaction log. And you've got to have your transaction log optimized and built in a way that can handle whatever load you're going to send it. And by the way, this is true if you were developing a custom ETL application, right? Um, if I'm going to use, let's say, fixed log size and the fixed logs are going to be uh, set, which is a good practice in my opinion in ETL, then I'm going to have to batch my ETL and then I'm going to have to run checkpoints on a, a frequent basis, right? So that's something to note. In this situation, I do a quick check on the transactions that are currently running. If something is currently running on that and basically it's just suspended but it's running anyway, is I'm going to go ahead and kill it. I'm going to get the log info on the current VLF and basically shrink and grow accordingly. Now, that's in most situations not going to work on every single situation. For instance, what happens if the drive is completely out of space? Um, and that and that's another example of an architecture that should never, ever, ever, ever happen. Uh, and and if you're working with let's say a systems team, the uh, the replication transaction log, any transaction log used on a database involved in receiving replication should be at least two times greater than if the entire load came over in the form of both a delete and then an insert. Okay, so think about that. How costly would it be to your log if it, all of your data were deleted and all of your data were then reinserted? Your transaction log needs to be double that size or the, the drive needs to be double that size to be able to handle that. And that's just, per, that's just for that one database, right? All the other databases got to plan accordingly, okay? Um, you may need to take a transaction log backup. This is some situations I've run into where it was simple recovery, had to set it to full recovery and um, take the transaction log backup, then revert back to simple recovery, uh, shrink and then possibly regrow. I don't like, you know, once I know that a log is going to be used a certain size, I want to always try to get to fixed log sizes, but I understand some environments just don't do it that way, so I want to regrow it out if I had to shrink it and I know it's going to be used. And then the worst case scenario, um, and I say worst case scenario, is to take the database into single user mode, correct, and then set back to uh, multi-user, and that's if you're in one of those environments where just everything is beating it and you cannot, uh, too many transactions are hitting it and you cannot uh, get it to where you can finally uh, get the log back to the state that it needs. It's a worst case scenario. Hopefully you never get into that situation, but I've been in that situation before. And um, yeah, it is inconvenient and there's going to be a lot of failed connections all of a sudden and you're going to have users complaining. Uh, the key to really avoiding this is to heavily scrutinize anytime you have um, replication. Even if you're using drop and recreate or truncate, always prepare for worst case scenario. Um, I've seen I've seen situations where someone, without notifying the other DBAs, went in and changed a drop and recreate to a delete. And so even though we had built it right, um, because there was an on-the-fly change made without notification, um, that ended up really hurting us. So that's just something uh, to note. Um, when it comes to replication, you definitely want to make sure that the transaction log on the receiving side, not saying anything on the publisher side, that's important too, but it should be at least double. Um, if everything was deleted and everything was back inserted. And that's going to be a lot. It's going to be quite a bit.